Здравствуйте, товарищи. Welcome back to Russian Through Propaganda. We're on day 60, and we're kind of continuing with our ordinal numbers, right? Those forms we learned on day 59, and we learned uh, right yesterday how to t talk about dates, right? Just the date all by itself, right? The day of the month and followed by the month, right? To state the date and also tell on what date something happened. So today we're kind of continuing that. We're going to talk about, uh, right, this week, last week, and so forth, and then we're going to talk more about stating years, right, giving full dates of historical events and so forth. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's start with uh, just some simple nouns. This is, again, the grammar today is, for the most part, very simple. Um, so let's start with a few time units here. Nidelia, miesiets, semester, gods. Okay, so how can we say, like, in, well, in English we'd say last week, last month, etc., versus this week, this month, and next week, next month. Okay, so how do we say that in Russian, right, to tell when something happened? Well, for this, for these uh, time increments, we use the uh, we use a preposition plus the prepositional case. So this is fairly, again, it makes perfect sense logically, right? Uh, as long as you remember that nidelia is a non-noun. We've, we've learned that before, right? Nidelia, for whatever reason, is a non-noun. And so we get uh, three phrases here. Na prošli nidelia, literally on last week or last week. Na eti nidelia, on this week, this week. Or na sliedujši nidelia, right? On the following week or on next week. Okay, for the other time increments here, we're using v, right? So we're saying literally in. Prošlo mjesec, veta mjesec, sljedujuši mjesec, semestr, also v, v prošlom semestre, vetem semestre, sljedujušim semestre, god. Now here we remember that uh, god is one of those masculine nouns that takes a stressed u in the, in the prepositional, right? So uh, you might want to circle that. Uh, again, there's no way we would know that. It's just an exception we have to keep in mind. Uh, and this is one of the most common common uh, examples of that kind of noun. В прошлом году, в этом году, в следующем году. Okay, so that's very simple there. Uh, I think we've probably seen that before. And there are a few questions in the book you can practice answering uh, to, to use those expressions. Okay, more importantly today, let's talk about in what year, right? So now we're giving, well... Later, we'll give a full date. For now, let's just keep it simple and talk about in what year something happened, right? Year only. Okay, and uh, you have a, there's a reference table, right, of all the forms we're going to need, right, uh, which we, in theory, know already. And we've added here a couple that are important, right? The, the thousands, right? Tisichny means the, the thousandth. And then the two thousandth, right, for the year 2000, dvuchtisichny, dvuchtisichny. And by the way, that form there, Instead of dva, we have dvuch, right? That's the genitive, the irregular genitive form of dva or dvie, right? So again, we're using these genitive forms usually to create compound numbers. Okay, so let's give a few examples, and let's keep in mind what we learned yesterday, that uh, for ordinal numerals, if we have compound numerals, it's only the final component that becomes an adjective, you know, that becomes a, an actual ordinal form, Right in here, I've put those in bold just to make that, uh, just to present it visually, right? So let's say 1837. How do we just simply state that name in that, that year in Russian? Okay, so what we're literally saying is 1837th year, right? It's only that final bit that becomes ordinal. Okay, let's do a few more examples. 1999, that's to the year 2000 is 2000 gods, 2001, right there, again, just stating 2000, and we're getting there in the genitive singular, again, after two, 2016, okay, now, sort of like the other day, right, we can simply state a date or name a year, now the question is, how do we say something happened on that date or in that year? And uh, for years, we see, again, this is very logically, right? Kind of like in English, something happened in the year 2000 or whatever. Well, in Russian, we get v plus the prepositional case, right? But again, since only that final, it's only the final element uh, that's becoming ordinal and is uh, showing the case difference, right? Because again, keep in mind that that final 
adjective, the, the ordinal number, right, like sijmoi, it's actually modifying god, right? So if we say something happened in such and such year, right, in the year, well, in Russian, we end up with vgadu, right? And then the adjective modifying gadu has to also show prepositional. So we end up with, again, gadu. Note again that only the, the form in bold there is changing. Okay, uh, so в 1999 году, в 2000 году, в 2001 году, в 2016 году. Okay, as you can probably tell already, these can become a bit of a mouthful, right? So with these long compound numbers, it, it takes some practice to really learn how to spit them out quickly, right? It's not easy, but it just takes practice. Again, thankfully, the grammar here isn't particularly difficult. Okay, so let's give some examples with uh, our our beloved Pushkin. So Pushkin died in 1837. Pushkin umir v... Okay, now we want to say in what year this happened. V 1837 gadu. Uh, let's say the war ended in 1945. Vaina zakonchilis v 1945 gadu. In the fifth year, right? The 45th year. And that fifth year is what's changing in Russian. Okay, let's... Uh, Today we'll get a chance to get a little overview of some important events in Russian history, right? By the way, Snovim Godom, right? An old poster here from, or a postcard, I don't know what that is, from 1939, uh, right? This is Nove God v 1939 Gadu, right? The new, this is the New Year celebration in uh, literally 1939th year, right? Divyatam Gadu. Okay, let's uh, read read out a few important events here in the year in which they occurred. So, Nicholas II signed the October Manifesto in 1905. This was after the first uh, uprising, right, and uh, which forced uh, Nicholas to make certain concessions and um, kind of create more of a semblance of a, a constitutional monarchy, even though he wasn't so much into the whole constitutional part of the equation, right? So he sort of started backsliding on a lot of these things. And I've heard a lot of historians argue that if if the if he had had more sense and, you know, it, and this, this is true of so much of Russian history, right, in the modern period, right, then throughout the 19th century, uh, that if, you know, if the government had loosened things up a little bit, uh, it would have allowed people to vent a lot of steam, right? It was so oppressive, and especially in these final years of the rule of Nicholas the the, the second, right? That uh, and it, it it ended up costing him, of course, and it led to something much more extreme than might necessarily have been um, the case otherwise. Okay, anyway, lots to think about with Russian history. I don't mean to. Uh, Simplify it here, but let's just state this fact. Nikolai II подписал Октябрьский манифе- манифест в 1905 году. Right, 1905 году. Number two, Октябрьская революция случилась в 1917 году. Okay, so we've got to be careful and think, right, that, you know, again, the final element is what we're really manipulating here. See, the October Revolution took place in 1917. We say, right, in 1900, and now 17. That's going to be the final component. Okay, Lenin died. Of course, he didn't live too long after the Revolution. You might, If you didn't know that, it's important to know, right? Vladimir Ilyich Lenin umir v 1924 году. And, of course, uh, power was taken by Stalin, who continued to consolidate it until, of course, we get the whole cult lichnesti, right, the cult of personality and all of the stuff we, you probably know a bit about. And not to mention the purges and all of this. Okay, number, uh, sorry, uh, don't remember if I stated the date. Vladimir Ilyich Lenin umir v 1924 gadu. Number four, the Great uh, Fatherland War, right? That is World War II started in 1941, right? With the surprise attack. Okay, uh, you may know that a couple of years prior, right? Uh, you had this fateful pact between the USSR and uh, Hitler's Germany, right? In which they carved up Poland, right? And then, of course, uh, 
So again, a lot of people in retrospect say that Stalin really bungled this badly, um, you know, and, and Russia was not ready for this. And so, of course, the Germans made deep incursions into Soviet territory, and they were really at the, you know, at the the, the doorstep of Moscow. And uh, so anyway, uh, again, a lot to talk about, needless to say. Okay, at any rate, Великая Отечественная война началась в 1941 году, right? 40, and then again, the final element is the first Первом году. Stalin died in 1953, on the same day, by the way, as Prokofiev. Uh, Stalin умер в году. So again, the final element is в третьем году. Watch the spelling. The Soviet Union fell apart, literally, collapsed in 1991. Советский Союз распал в году. Uh, another, of course, very interesting story there. I guess, um, you know, one thing that amazes a lot of people is that that was more or less bloodless, right? It was, it ended up, it didn't necessarily have to happen that way, right? But, uh, you know, a lot of people thought that if, if the, USSR were to collapse, it would be something kind of catastrophic and, um, you know, apocalyptic or something, but it kind of went out with a bit of a whimper. Uh, and that that's good news because, again, it, there wasn't any massive loss of life or anything, just kind of an armed showdown. But anyway, what, what, anyway, enough. And of course, Yeltsin, Yeltsin is, ended up being the first president of post-Soviet uh, Russia. Okay, anyway. Number seven, Putin stopped president of Russian Federation in 2000. Okay, uh, let's talk about giving full dates. Okay, so not only the year, but the the the, the date, the month, the year. And uh, let's start this with a couple of just examples. Look at the first poster. Daidion do Berlina. We will make it to Berlin. Prefixed motion verb, right? And uh, we could say that the Vilika Atechstvenaya Vaina Nachilais. Okay, it began on what date? Let's give the full date now. Dvatsit Tarova Iulia, right? So on the twenty second of July, using the genitive, just the way we did learn the other day. And now we're saying of the blah 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 if year, right? Or the the blah 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 first year. Right. So again, the first several components of this compound number that is the year, we're simply giving the car the or the cardinal numbers and then it's only the final element that we're putting into the genitive. So again let's read this out. Vilika Atechstvonaya Vaina Nachilais Dvalsit Tarova Iulia Tische Divitsot Sorak Pierva Goda. Again the Dvalsit Tarova, right the genitive with the, the date there, Iulia of right the twenty second of July of the blah 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 first year. Okay, genitive. Okay, look at another poster, and here we have kind of a right, very meta, right, a poster within a poster, very clever, uh, right, and the, the writing on the wall there is Dashli, meaning we've made it, we made it to Berlin, and this is kind of a, a, a reference to the graffiti uh, scrawled by Soviet soldiers on the walls of the Reichstag, right, the, the, uh, the infamous uh, Reichstag, right, which was overtaken, and uh, when when uh, when Germany, well, when was this? In the early nineties, like mid nineties, I suppose they re restored the uh, the Reichstag building, and they actually preserved a lot of this graffiti, right? So if you ever go there, you can see some of this Soviet graffiti that's kind of referenced here in this poster. Okay, so you see it's the same soldier, and he's like Dashli, right? We made it to Berlin, mission accomplished. And we could say that the Velika Techstvonaya Vaina Zakonchilis, right? It ended on Vaismova Maya Tistivitsort Sorak Piatava Goda. Uh okay, so uh let's go back and see some more examples. What if we're simply stating the full date, right? Sivonya Divyata Maya. Okay, so as we know already, right, today is the 9th of May. And then we're saying of the blah, 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 fifth year, right? Which makes perfect sense, right? So genitive, right? Sivonya Divyate Maya Tisjivitsot Sorak Piatava Goda. Again, note it's only the final component that's going into that genitive form of the of the adjective, right? Now, if you want to tell on what date, then we're getting the 
genitive, right? Just the way we saw it yesterday, except now instead of simply giving the date, we're giving the full date, including the year, right? So, Vaina Zakonchilis Divyatava Maya, right? On the 9th of May, genitive of time, we could say. Right, that's the 9th of May of the year, right, 945. Sorry, 1,945. Okay, uh, let's give two more examples with Lidanian's uh, date of birth, date of death. Okay, so in that first example, we were simply stating the date, right? The date of the birth of Lianyin is or was April 22nd. Okay, what if we rephrase that just a bit and say he was born, right? We use an action verb and we're saying this event happened on this date, right? Well, then we have to change the grammar a bit, right? We need the genitive of time there with the, the date expression. Lianyin radil se dvarset vtarova aprelia tisci vosimsot semidisiatova guada. Okay, so just note the only thing changing there is the vtarova. Right, that's again we could just say that's the genitive of time that we used when, when used when stating on what date something happened. Okay, so uh, let's practice this a little bit. Let's take again Lianyin and let's start with his date and we'll get a bit of repetition here, but let's just simply state his date of birth, right? Data Rajdini Lenina Dvarset Vtaroya Aprelia Tisichia Vosim Sort Simidisyatava Goda. Okay, what if we want to say he was born on the 22nd of April. Okay, Lenin Radilsia, Dvarset Vtarova, Aprelia, Tisci Vosimsot, Semidisiatova Goda. Okay, now here's something new his date of death, Data Smirti. Okay, let's again simply state it Data Smirti Lenina, Dvarset Pirvoya, Yenvaria, Tisci Divitsot, Dvarset Chitvurtova Goda. If we want to say he died on this date, then we're back to the genitive Lenin Umir. Okay, let's take Stalin. Okay, so born on 18, 18th of December, 1878. Uh, Stalin, as you may know, was Georgian, right? Uh, his actual name was Djurashvili. Um, and Stalin, right, from, as you probably know, from the noun Stal which means steel. I think we probably noticed that, uh, noted that, right? So Lenin and Stalin, like a lot of early revolutionaries, their last name was a, a nom de guerre, right? <laughs> Excuse my French. Okay, Data uh, Rajdinia. Okay, so what was his date of birth? Again, simply stating the date. Data Rajdinia Stalina, 18 December 1878. Okay, if we rephrase that a bit and say he was born on this date, Stalin Radilsia, Vosimnarsitava Dikabria, Tisti Vosimsot, Semdisit Vaismova Goda. Okay, what was his date of death? Data Smirti Stalina, Piataya Marta, Tisti Divitsot, Pidisia Tretiva Goda. Okay, if we want to say he died on that date, Stalin Umir, Piatava Marta, Tisti Divitsot, Pidisia Tretiva Goda. Okay, you might practice giving your own date of birth. Uh, too early to give your date of death, ha ha. Right. Um, okay, anyway. Uh, okay, what about decades? Again, kind of a little side topic here, but also very useful, especially for you uh, budding historians, right? Uh, grammar pretty is pretty easy here, right? And uh, So in, the, in English, we say the 20s, the 30s, the 40s. Quite similarly, in, in Russian, you say the, for example, the 20th years, right? So we're getting a plural form, god becomes godi, and we say dvatsate godi, meaning the 20, 20th years, tridsate godi, the 30s, srakavuye godi, pitidisyate godi, shistidisyate godi, semidisyate godi, vesmidisyate godi, divinoste godi, nulivuye godi, right, the zeros. Uh, okay, so that's fairly easy, right? And nothing really shocking there. And if we want to say in the past decade or in this decade, we could do something similar to what we started with today, right? Right, that's the word for decade. You can tell that's a special soft neuter, right? Okay, so... Now, there are actually two ways to do this uh, if we want to tell in what decade, right? And these, as far as I can tell, these are just completely interchangeable. I'm not sure, again, statistically, which is more common. You hear both 
Um, so the first way you could do this is using v with the accusative, right? That would be, for example, v smidisiate gode, in the 80s. Or you can use the prepositional plural, which we actually haven't learned yet, right? So this is a bit of a, we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves, but just to show both of these variants, right? You could say v smidisiate gadach, v smidisiate gadach, right? Literally, in these years, prepositional plural, ich ach. Русская рок-музыка начала выходить из подполья, right? In the 80s, Russian rock music began to emerge from the underground, right? So speaking of kind of late Soviet history, that's a really kind of thing that's always, I've always been very interested in, right? And of course, if you go to the website, you can see a lot of rock lyrics that I've, I've started uploading. And, uh, you know, m most of them from this sort of classic, I don't know what you want to call it, classic rock period of the, la of the, of the 80s when rock music went from sort of an underground scene and something that was officially prohibited uh, to something that became a really big deal, especially the, you know, Kino and Victor Tsoi's band. Uh, so it's kind of an interesting process there. Okay, so again, you can say Vosmidisiatea, accusative plural, or Vosmidisiatech Gadach, uh, prepositional plural, more or less interchangeable. If I had to guess, I would think the accusative is more common just because it's maybe a bit easier, kind of, I don't know, but either one is fine. Okay, so let's let's stick, since we haven't learned the prepositional yet, let's stick with the accusative option. And again, learn a bit about Russian history. See how much of this uh, you, you're familiar with. In the 20s, right, so Dvatsate Gwody, Была гражданская война и новая экономическая политика, или НЭП, right, НЭП, новая экономическая политика. Okay, so in the 20s, there was the Civil War, right? Remember, uh, I think a lot of students maybe don't really know this, again, which is fine. Uh, they, you know, a lot of you were totally new to Russian stuff. So yes, Russia had a civil war in the wake of the revolution, right, between the, the whites and the reds, basically. There was, there's more to it, but... Um, anyway, the Reds were the communists, basically, and they drove out the whites and uh, won, ultimately, of course. Okay, and now in the 20s, in the mid-20s, um, they um, they had to pull back a little bit on this whole socialism thing, right? And uh, basically, Lenin allowed a bit, a, a sort of very low-level free trade. Um, and so you had a lot of sort of speculation and this kind of thing. Anyway, again, there's so much to this story, but Nova Economiska Politica. If you want a taste of that that whole time period, this kind of freewheeling, uh, you know, early Soviet period under NAP, um, watch the movie Dvinatsit Stulia of the Twelve Chairs, which I think I've mentioned before. It's a really funny movie. It's based on this kind of picaresque novel, uh, which itself is very popular, but then it in turn gave, gave uh, rise to two uh, screen versions of the, of this movie, uh, right in Soviet cinema, both of which are great. I prefer the second one, personally, but uh, they're both really great and very funny. Okay, anyway, um, in the thirties, тридцатые годы была коллективизация и большой террор. Okay, so collectivization and the Great Terror. That was the first big wave of repressions under Stalin. And so, again, a lot to talk about. We'll, we'll talk about that um, quite a bit in, uh, the end of, at the end of this book when we read Akhmatava. We'll talk a bit about what, that, what was going on there. Okay, uh, in the 40s, right? Сроковые годы шла великая отечественная война, right? So in the 40s, well, the big event there surely was the right World War II, великая отечественная война. Okay, what about in the 50s? В 50-е годы началась Хрущевская оттепель после смерти Сталина в 1953 году. Okay, very important, right? After Stalin's death, which we mentioned, 1953, Khrushchev took over. Uh, and by the way, you might want to note the way his name is said in Russian, Khrushchev. Uh, right, it's not Khrushchev. Khrushchev you know, again, People in English say this name in any number of different ways. It's Khrushchev. Khrushchev. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so he took over and he had this, what's called the thaw, right? Kind of a loosening of all these 
uh, cultural, you know, Soviet realism and all this, all these, uh, but, well, both culturally and politically, you had a thaw, right? There, there was an end to these mass repressions uh, for the most part and uh, a lot more leeway given to artists and cinematographers. And so there are a lot of really great movies from this period, including Yashagai Po Maskvia, which we've mentioned before, right? Um, okay, anyway, uh, in the 60s, Fistidisiate Godi Nachelsia Period Zastoya, right? So a period of stagnation began. It's often called Period Zastoya. By the way, you may notice the somewhat unusual stress, Nachelsia, right? That is, a, that's not a typo, right? That's what most Russians would say, I believe, right? The stress on the Sia, uh, somewhat unpredictable. Okay, anyway, uh, in the 70s, Simidisiate Godi Okay, so this long period of just general stagnation, again, after the kind of fresh start under Khrushchev, kind of an exciting period, you had this kind of prolonged period, more of, you know, general stagnation, which continued and got worse under Brezhnev. Um, okay, in the 80s, в 80-е годы начался период пристройки при власти Михаила Горбачева. Okay, Gorbachev, right? Uh, uh, again, note how his name is actually spelled and pronounced in Russian. And you've probably heard this term, Perestroika, which means literally a rebuilding or, you know, a re reorganization or whatever. Uh, Perestroika. In the 90s, в 90 годы было много преступности после распада СССР. Поэтому в России часто говорят о них как о лихих 90 so there was a lot of crime after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Therefore, in Russia, they often speak of them, meaning of the 90s, uh, as about the wild 90s. That's kind of a tricky grammatical construction. We'd say in Russian, in English, that Russians often refer to the 90s as the Lichia Divinostaya, which means something like the wild, the crazy 90s. Okay, so again, I'm painting with a broad brush here for the sake of this exercise, but I think that's a fairly safe uh general assessment of the 90s explains a lot of, you know, more recent Russian politics. If you want to get a quick taste of the 90s, uh, the first movie that comes to mind, and it's kind of a, a cult favorite and kind of a, you know, it's kind of a action pick, you know, it's, I can't, you know, claim that it's just completely historically accurate or whatever, but it definitely uh, gets at this kind of well, the mafia activity, right? A lot of crime, a lot of disorder, and just general decay. So the movie is Brat, which was filmed in Petersburg. Um, I think that was made in like 97 or something, if memory serves. And that was a few years before I first got to Petersburg in 2000. And um, and I can tell you that when I got there, it st Petersburg still looked like it did in, when, when the movie Brat was filmed. So when I think back to the first, you know, my first experiences of Petersburg, that's, I kind of like watching Broad because it kind of takes me back to, the, to, to those days. And, uh, you know, well, speaking of, speaking of nostalgia, right, I mean, things in Russia now are so much better. It's generally so much more fun to be there than it used to be. Again, if we take a lot of these kind of superficial consumerist type things, right, food, restaurants, uh, just kind of the cultural scene and things like this. But, you know, it's hard not to be kind of nostalgic for the the, the grimy, uh, moody kind of <laughs> atmosphere that uh, that uh, I encountered uh, back in 2000. Of course, I had a lot of very good times back then, right? Good friends and this this and that. So uh, I guess that's the way life works, right? You, you glamorize the past and you're nostalgic for it and you think about the good times and you... Uh, right, forget the bad times, and that's true of the of the year two thousand, and also I suppose of the entire Soviet period. The, the way a lot of Russians think about it and talk about it. Who can blame them, right? Okay, um, what about centuries? Uh, okay, this is fairly easy, just very straightforward. The eighteenth century, the nineteenth century. We're just using ordinals, right? Восемнадцатый век. And now, um, yeah, uh, so we can say in the 20th century, well, that's very straightforward, plus the prepositional. So, 
Okay, so that's very straightforward there. Okay, one more little um, item here. I think we've seen this a couple of times already. In, in fact, I know we saw it the other day. The word ras means a time, right? Like a time you did something. Uh, so we, we practiced that uh, the other day saying, you know, once, twice, five times, and so forth, right? Adin ras, dva raza, tri raza, chitiri raza, right? Those two, three, four with the genitive singular. And then five and above, we get genitive plural, which for this particular word looks just like the nominative singular. I think I talked about that a little bit. That's an old case form, uh, believe it or not, that you still see in very isolated instances in modern Russian. Okay, so uh, we have here just a, a, again, a quick rundown of expressions with ras. And today, now that we've learned the ordinals, we can add uh, some very useful expressions for example, for the first time, в первый раз, во второй раз, в сотый раз, right, for the hundredth time, and, and в последний раз, for the last time, right, последний being a soft adjective. Okay, so let's just look at the, the two basic instructions. Я смотрел этот фильм два раза. I've watched it two times, right, twice. Два раза, and then I'm watching it for the first time. Я смотрю его в первый Ras or vaftaroy ras for the second time, for the third time, and so forth. Okay, so pretty again. The uh, grammatically that was fairly easy, but again, using dates comfortably can take some practice. You've got to really get comfortable with spinning out these long uh, numerical forms, right? Uh, but again, the good news is that a lot of this grammar is fairly easy to process and, and makes perfect sense. Okay, that does it for the first chapter of book two. Uh, until next time, do свидания, товарищи, и вперед к новым партнерам.